So moving to the last session of the day, it's my privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker, Dr. R. Shiva Chidambaram from CSIR CBRI Roki. Uh, sir, if possible, could you please uh, share your screen? Yeah. Is it visible now? Huh, a full screen, please. Yes. So he will be talking on the influence of textile reinforcement on the performance enhancement of masonry structure. Let me give you a brief introduction about the speaker. Dr. Chidambaram earned his master's in structural engineering from the Institute of Road and Transport Technology and PhD in earthquake engineering from IIT Roorkee. His prime areas of research interest include precast structures, earthquake resistant design, repair and retrofitting, shift structures, high performance materials, fiber composites, corrosion, rebar couplers, textile reinforcement, 3D printing and collapsible structures. So he has a vast experience in all these fields he has developed the concept of geogrid confinement in reinforced concrete structural elements and has developed an in-core joint shear resistance mechanism. He is the recipient of the Best Technology Award for the year 2020 and 2021 from CSIR. He also received many Best Technical Paper Awards. He has published more than 60 research articles in peer-reviewed international journals and international conferences. He also has a couple of patents in his name. He is a member of various professional bodies like Bureau of Indian Standard, Indian Society of Technical Education, IST, Indian Society of ICIT, ISCMS, ACF, PSI, and many more. He is currently working as a senior scientist at Central Building Research Institute, CBRI, Roorkee, a unit of CSIR, and as an assistant professor in the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, ACSIR, Ghaziabad. Sir, a warm welcome to you. Now I invite Dr. Chidambaram to please start the session. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Pravin, for the brief introduction. And thanks for inviting me to deliver this lecture. Let me Most start welcome, now. Sir. Yeah, please. Yeah. <clears throat> so very uh, good evening to everyone. So a day before, it's like a pre-Diwali celebration for all <laughs> in <laughs> terms of mass and ray, I hope so. Uh, so the title of the presentation is like Influence of Textile Reinforcement on the Performance Enhancement of uh, Mass and Ray Structure. So uh, I hope uh, everybody would have covered uh, what is the need of uh, strengthening and retrofitting. Um, because, you know, uh, during an earthquake event, uh, last week uh, we had a uh, earthquake in uh, Nepal and uh, even this region, Uttarakhand region and the NCR region has felt a uh, huge amount of troubles. So uh, uh, in the recent earthquake, uh, it's like 5.9 and 6 point uh, above, and a lot of uh, structures collapsed uh, in uh, in Nepal. Uh, we, have, we have closely related to Nepal in terms of uh, post-earthquake construction works. So uh, the damaged building and collapsed building, uh, so we have uh, lost more than uh, 150 plus lives during this earth recent earthquake in Nepal. The majority of the building which was collapsed was actually a uh, uh, earthen building and uh, masonry building, which was not constructed properly. That's what uh, the observation was. So even if you, you can see the lot of you can see a lot of pics uh, through the news channels, and you can see uh, those the wall wall sizes are not even 230. It's even more 400 mm, 300 350 mm wall thickness still. I failed because of a lot of uh, corner joints and it was failed to resist incline and out of lane forces. So these are the very typical observations, uh, basically. You can see uh, during an earthquake, um, masonry buildings collapsed and uh, few earthen buildings survived because of its uh, uh, shape and other things. And you can see that first image, uh, we can see the diagonal uh, cracks, uh, which was traveling from the corner of the building towards that uh, uh, window openings. Because when the in plane action uh, occurs, uh, the openings uh, actually uh, it's not contributing much towards uh, stiffness and lateral resistance. So, which is the reason for diagonal cracks uh, exactly uh, in the in the 
uh, in between the window opening and door openings and other things. Okay, uh, here also you can see uh, not only in mass under structures, in, uh, even in RCC also, when the building is subjected to a large amount of lateral force, uh, we can uh, see a lot of diagonal cracks between these portions. Okay. Now, first of all, we should know uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, you can see uh, in this image, this is uh, not because of any earthquake, it is because of some sediment in a building which we have observed in 2020. So the corner uh, joints were first in first image, the corner joints were cracked and uh, the corner joints were cracked, which shows that the corner was not properly anchored for corner cracks, corner cracks, and this is the diagonal cracks which we have observed. And you can see uh, the horizontal cracks. This is actually a messenger building having RCC beam and RCC slab. There's no column at all. So the settlement can be easily vis visually seen from the interface cracks and this is a kind of diagonal cracks which we have observed and uh, uh, not only that uh, this uh, area has been again uh, suffered because of some earthquake tremors so which was which was uh, aggravated the failure patterns you can see the cracks in the uh, window opening regions and uh, this is the typical example of uh, floor settlements cracks in the building due to floor settlements so here the tile has been split into two portions exactly so probably everybody would have covered this, like I hope so. Um, yeah, confined mass and what is the need of confined mass? So please uh, listen to just for a few slides because it has a relation with my presentation. Now we have a roof band, lintel band, plinth bands using RCC, and then we have a vertical reinforcements in the corners and the and the exactly in the openings of the building. So integrate the building. So our ultimate aim is to create a box action. The building should behave like a box so that we can able to transfer the force and can able to resist the lateral force. So the, ba the band may be consist of RCC. If you don't have RCC reinforcement steel, you can go for bamboo or cane wood, anything just to integrate the buildings. Okay, so what is uh, um, uh, like, you know, when, when the building is subjected to a lateral force, how can we expect uh, the in-plane out, uh, out of plane failure? What is the need of uh, anchorage exactly in the corner regions? Why should we anchor, uh, anchor the uh, uh, walls in in-plane as well as an out-of-plane direction to, to to create a box action. So staircase and uh, how uh, the, can, the these kind of uh, bands helps you to resist the lateral forces that integrates the building and uh, controls these kind of cracks formation. Obviously, these kind of reinforcement will help you to resist the force but with minimal damage. So when I am providing the vertical reinforcement, we can able to get uh, wonderful lateral resistance behavior without any cracks in the diagonal regions. It will show you a lot of cracks, but it will not collapse as we are experiencing. This is how it resists the uh, diagonal force. Okay, so uh, uh, just a small uh, glimpse about all these things. We know masonry building is vulnerable for earthquake, masonry building is vulnerable for uh, uh, settlement issues. Now masonry building is vulnerable for even vegetation growth also. Okay, vegetation growth, is uh, if you look at any old buildings, you will find a lot of vegetation in and around your uh, masonry buildings because of improper maintenance, we can say, or the particular region where the vegetation growth starts, there our mortar as well as your cement, uh, cement binder or lime binder lost its uh, binding property. There only the soil or sand exists, which, uh, which, much, which is much needed uh, for a plant to grow with some part of water. So once the water reacted with those soils and with the weeds, it will start to grow. Now we have to immediately terminate all this uh, uh, leaves, branches, plus root. Root is very, very important. Basically, uh, small, small plants and algae uh, kind of, you know, that can be removed easily. But when you see a banyan tree or a pipple tree, those things are very dangerous to the building that can kill the building first. And then that will reinforce the building. It will not even allow the building to collapse. That's the beauty of uh, uh, people, uh, people tree uh, uh, root. We can see the root. Uh, the actually this uh, here, yeah. Here in the second story, we we saw a roof garden. Uh, it's because of accumulation of dust particles and uh, other things. Uh, and uh, when it reacts with water, it starts to grow. Now the uh, the plants grow. Now it needs a source, source of water. How long it, it relies on rainwater? 
it needs some ground water so the root travel into the duct this is the duct so the root travels into the duct and finally reaches the ground and transports the required nutrition to the roof plant okay so they are very clever uh, plants they can travel up to even if it is starts from fifth story it can reach ground it knows where the ground is okay now the weakest point in masonry is the interface like between the slab and masonry wall and the slab between the wall and lintel it can uh, go through it and obviously we will find some dampness because of lintel issues and uh, sunset issues there the water body will be there and nearby the uh, washroom regions it will uh, the wall will have some uh, water dampness so that those waters are much needed for the plant growth so they will consume that it will travel towards that the root will root will travel towards that it will not break rcc but it can travel through the interface between the masonry wall and the rcc element it, this is the roof garden which i am talking about okay now if you look at this image you can see a kind of roof garden uh, it is not advisable for the health of building so now the question comes uh if you look at the second image i can able to see the vegetation growth here and here but not in this region the reason is the surface damages were properly repaired so when this regions were exposed to atmosphere it starts to react with that and we can able to see the vegetation growth similarly here the accumulation of waste particles soil particles because of uh, wind and dust when it reacts with water start to grow same thing near the water tanks Okay, now you can see here. Very interesting study is the root is traveling between the slab and wall interface, and this is the root traveling between the corner walls. And here, the plant. This is G plus two building, and the tree is located in uh, second story, and the root is growing, uh, coming towards the ground. The building is alive now. People are staying in this building. I have seen this building in the last year also. We have. did some study in this building okay so now what is the side effect of this apart from the cracks in the wall uh, we have a demo in cbr a campus also how it will affect the buildings uh, if possible i will try to show you through my mobile video after the presentation uh, when you continuously keep the water tightness or dampness in your in your uh, uh, lintel as well as in slab it will start to corrode it will start to corrode because a lot of impurities will travel into it and you will experience this corrosion is not because of other thing it is because of water dampness and plant growth so uh, probably they would have covered the importance of confinement using uh, reinforcement bands and uh, how to make that uh, vertical reinforcement and uh, lintel bands i hope so uh, professor did they cover probably in the previous lectures yeah some of the part has been covered sir but you can uh, also cover there is okay, no issue okay fine, fine 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 good so uh, in this image you can see the vertical reinforcement is traveling the corners and openings and then they are making the sill level band lintel level bands and uh, similarly uh, the roof level with slab it will integrate the building together to create the box section so this is a, a pitched roof you know when you have a pitched roof that is also unstable kind of so for this we have to confine this region gable wall has to be confined perfectly otherwise this is the weakest point so that will collapse and it will fall down and uh, similarly the roof needs to be braced like this to, so that uh, it will not collapse it will not fall down kind of bracings so uh, we have we may have brick columns in our uh, uh, porticos and uh, such as opening areas that needs to provide uh, rc reinforcement normal steel reinforcement with the external um, concreting mild amount of concreting uh, so uh, so already i have covered I have, if, even if it is g plus 1 the same kind of uh, bands and vertical reinforcements to be provided especially corner and opening reinforcement is very very essential to create uh, structural integrity okay now the question comes like if it is my my building is a uh, quite uh, quite a bit old building then how can i go for kind of uh, strengthening my existing building is uh, depends on the configuration of the building if it is an arch building generally we should not touch that because if you if you alter the stress path that will collapse the building uh, generally those buildings are, are uh, very high gravity based building uh, settlement may create some issues because of its high gravity it can resist the lateral force too 
further if, if the building demands we can go for anchoring to make the arch units and the keystone to be in a very perfect position and we have to ensure the bonding also similarly those walls used to be a very large walls no we have to create an anchorage between this and that basically surface stones will be in different form in between fillers may be of different state so then so we have to create a um, connection between the outer and inner stones through some key uh, that key may be of uh, wooden key or the key may be of uh, steel key whatever and it has to be properly grouted so proper anchorage and very important thing is like foundation strengthening so we have to first evaluate whether the foundation is uh, in very perfect uh, state or uh, uh, not uh, if it is in very perfect state then we can go for uh, strengthening or retrofitting if not you got to strengthen the foundation first so first of all you have to open the foundation first you just look into the foundation depth what kind of foundation they have gone for and uh, um, what is the status of the foundation and how can we improve the foundation just don't uh, blindly we can't go for uh, concreting or uh, cement plaster anywhere because one of the study what we observe is uh, actually they have used earthen uh, wall kind of thing and uh, they have done cement plastering so what happened that uh, the earthen wall will absorb the water uh, when while doing the uh, while doing that uh, cement plaster work and uh, after a few months you know that uh, that uh, uh, cement plaster will will completely fall down the reason is like that the bonding between that two is not possible okay so that we have to create such kind of uh, perfect treatment prior to this and that is an earthen wall we have to take care of that lot of coatings are there for earthen walls if you apply that coating that will uh, that will avoid we can avoid those kind of issues so this is what i said like uh, the surface outside the uh, stone will be different and inside the uh, stone uh, stone will be different this key uh, plays a vital role to interconnect otherwise the this will behave like a different uh, form and this will behave like a different form it will completely collapse okay so probably they would have uh, covered this like uh, this is external confinement external confinement you see uh, welded by us even professor pravin is very very good expert in this um basically what we can do is we can completely reinforce the wall using uh, this kind of welded wire mesh and uh, for welded wire mesh also uh, we have to create a internal as well as uh, external and then it has to be interconnected using the key again otherwise this will act like an independent uh, unit and uh, prior to this if you find any cracks in the building we have to stitch the cracks or grout the cracks fill the cracks first and then integrate the building uh, nowadays we have the technology to lift and to sift the building so i will cover those case study also so when you have this kind of cracks so your building is uh, settled like this for example the, if you have a crack like this so the, the settlement happened in this direction so try to apply a force in this direction so you the uh, and you can go for grouting and this crack will be sealed off and you can go for strengthening so that is the right way otherwise what will happen if without any applying this bottom force bottom force application is not easy task we have to use the technology of uh, building lifting using some jacks so that it will apply the uh, this pressure and uh, it will lift the building to interlock the cracks and uh, the bottom should be strengthened using uh, any kind of reinforcements or masonry so uh, this is the typical uh, see this is the uh, um, settlement issues so now the settlement happened exactly here and we have to uh, lift the building towards upside and this crack will be sealed up using the things and uh, then we can go for strengthening or any any kind of strengthening purpose so th this is the typical strengthening they used to follow that uh, similar to the lintels similar to the corners similar to the openings we have to provide the welded wire mesh like this it has to be perfectly connected using internal and external thing and then uh, we have to go for plastering using any cement as uh, uh, mortar yeah like this this is the internal side and we have to provide a vertical reinforcement also because the purpose of the vertical reinforcement is to provide the corner connection very perfectly so this is a typical example has been done in uh... yeah so it is one of my uh, uh, fellow researcher has done this research like they see for example this is the masonry wall and uh, so they have provided the anchor and base mortar to keep the level equal 
and they have used welded wire mesh and uh, again plastering and then uh, they have tested under bending so that uh, it's like an uh, out of uh, a plane testing bending test of uh, masonry wall stilton wall basically a masonry wall a um, unreinforced masonry wall will have a brittle failure like this but we can able to have a wonderful amount of uh, ductility or post peak deflection because of the reinforcement provided and very important thing in masonry wall is we have to uh, encounter the we have to uh, ensure, um, consider the capacity of your wall otherwise you know crushing effect will happen accordingly we have to provide the reinforcement so the cracks are generally uh, happening between the mortar gap you can see here so no bricks are getting damaged easily so only through the mortar gaps the cracks were observed in the in the, in the study which proves that mortar is the weakest region uh, in the masonry wall and uh, when we provide uh, this kind of reinforcement the cracks have should happen otherwise you can't expect a wonderful bending and uh, the welded wire mesh steel wire mesh uh, is yielding and we can get a perfect ductile behavior so this is uh, the coordinator of the program uh, professor pravin study so uh, you can see uh, they have used uh, frp uh, reinforcement uh, because uh, here there are issues with uh, welded wire steel mesh that's not durable much so they have uh, just ground the surface and applied uh, FRP with epoxy and it has been studied under bending. So you can see uh, unreinforced and uh, uh, FRP reinforced. Uh, so again, we can go for a short treating and uh, this is not applicable. Generally, we are not practicing in India. But uh, this kind of uh, gap between these two needs to be connected using this kind of portions because this is for better thermal comfort. In that circumstance also, we have to ensure the proper connection, otherwise it will get corroded. So after ensuring this proper connection, we have to go for strengthening. Yeah. So the question comes, a lot of uh, study has been done using uh, um, various types of uh, materials apart from steel material. That's purely because of uh, still, uh, everywhere still is not possible, you know, like if you go to uh, Himalayan regions in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and uh, Nepal and Bhutan, you know, those hilly regions, transporting the materials to the topmost hilly regions are very uh, uh, difficult. And very importantly, if you look at them, they will stay in a remotely located regions where one, the gap between one house to another house will be half a kilometer, we can say. So they, they have habituated like that and there, Transporting those kind of uh, steel meshes uh, are very difficult. So monthly once they will come down uh, to market region and they will buy and they will go, to, go, go go to the top. So the material should be lightweight and uh, can can easily transportable kind of materials much needed for them. And uh, they are not using uh, uh, conventional brick masonry kind of because they are use they have to use the local available material. Traditional architecture will gives you wonderful amount of lateral resistance, but lot of for deforestation limitations, we can't go for wooden thing. So, uh, so a few studies has been done using PP band, and uh, they have connected like this. You can see here, external mesh and internal mesh, and it connected. It's also like a textile thing. You now they have made a, a mesh using a PP band, polypropylene based band, and uh, connected using a steel wire. You can see that steel wire is the key. Steel wire is the key, and uh, internally, externally, and they have done the plastic. So, uh, all the studies, you know, and we can use even bamboo band. Bamboo can be used as a bamboo band, and wherever is possible, a minimal amount of reinforcement using bamboo or steel can even help you to increase the lateral resistance capacity. So uh, they have tried with different type of uh, connective technologies like this. You can see. So let me come to uh, um, textile reinforcement. Uh, uh, we have experience. We have uh, evaluated in our uh, laboratory. So here uh, you can see uh, uh, what I have used is like uh, non apart from the normal glass textiles, uh, carbon textiles, uh, basalt textiles, we have tried with the geogrid because geogrid is one of the it's coming under the category of geotextile rather than built textile. But the strain of geogrid is incomparable with any kind of carbon, glass or basalt because masonry building masonry is a very brittle material and has very possess a less amount of strength compared to carbon. A glass so i don't want that much amount of strength in otherwise what will happen delamination or uh, what will happen uh, premature failure will happen so to avoid that we have to use a less strength uh, with better strain to provide better ductility uh, in mass structure so we have tried uh, attempted uh, 
a geo grid and we have tested with a conventionally available glass textiles and even we have tried a plastic based bottle based uh, textile grids we have uh, we have made it at, uh, in our laboratory so uh, similar to uh, the previous cases we have done uh, you can see here we have used uh, uh, wall panels and we have uh, used uh, geo grid as a strengthening materials and then we have gone for plastic in order to compare the performance with the frp we used the uh, GFRP reinforced uh, wall paper. See, this is a GFRP and this is a geo grid. Okay. okay. So we have provided the anchorages using uh, screws rather than through string. We have provided the adequate amount of, we have done the pull off study. Based on that, we have chosen the number of anchorages one, two, three, four. You can see in a, uh, then we have done a parallel to bed joint and perpendicular to bed joint to simulate the site conditions. Um, can see the graph. No, it's wonderful, right? So basically, uh, the conventional has gone up and uh, come down it's like this. But uh, with reference to the strength of the grid, I can get a wonderful post peak behavior and gradual degradation. So what does it mean? So uh, I can able to see the vertical crack here, and um, uh, my, my 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 big sample has a wonderful amount of deformation. So this can be. Uh, an efficient uh, uh, stress transfer mechanism of the textile which we have used in the masonry thing. So now this is FRP. So FRP, what it says that so there is a crack in the thing, and because of you know the FRP modulus is higher than the brick modulus or geogrid modulus, so exactly the support failed here. Support failed. Whereas this is a geogrid, this is geogrid, and this is again a geogrid. You can see here. Uh, in both the cases, the mortar delaminator and the geogrid holds the force perfectly because the strain is more than 15 percentage strain, 10 to 15 percentage strain we have with geogrid, which is uh, very difficult to yield. Even under tension mission, we were not uh, able to make it yield. So we have used polypropylene, that is the, what I have used this is poly ester based uh, um, geogrid and this is a poly uh, propylene based geogrid, which is almost like a plastic, plastic thing you can see how it bridges the crack, how it bridges the crack and how it yielding, how it is yielding. So this is a FRP thing, FRP uh, 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 delamination and uh, rupture. Okay. So when you use various type of textiles, accordingly the failure pattern changes and the capacity changes and strength of the grid matters at the same time if you use high modulus, high modulus, what will happen? Uh, prior to reaching your uh, strain, yielding strain of your material, our brick wallet will fail. Because brick has a certain, a certain capacity uh, which can't be matched with any kind of high strength materials. So that's why we have to choose the right material. Even when you choose check textiles, it has to be we have to choose the right textile and number of layer matters. Okay. So now it is uh, out of plane uh, bending. Now you can see. Again, uh, uh, you can't even see the red color graph. Red color graph is like this, and sudden failure. And uh, we have uh, this, this uh, gain and drop and gain. So it is like a uh, gain, drop, gain, drop, gain, drop. So why it is happening in textile enforcement is when your textile ruptures, suddenly the drop will be there. The force will transfer to the another textile that will take the load. Okay. Similarly, it will go until the number of uh, if the number of textile uh, strips uh, failed uh, is more than the number of uh, textile strip available to resist the force is less then it will come to halt then you can expect this degradation until it will keep on going keep on going it's like a stepped pattern generally it will go and uh, you can see a kind of thing and it will go like and finally it will come back so this is the issues so now if you think that i can we can even apply a pre stress when we use pre-stress, we can get a uniform amount of uh, gain and uh, drop in the load. Again, here also you can see failure in the uh, support regions and uh, your uh, geogrid actually peeled off from the surface because the amount of displacement is like 60 mm. It's very huge for a masonry building, masonry structures. So uh, obviously FRP is a wonderful material. So we ex experienced a support failure similar to the previous case. So uh, this is a close-up view of that. So we can see exactly the uh, force has uh, applied like this. So the crack occurred on this and uh, textile delaminated from the surface. 
is the top most region of the cell. Okay. So now the comes, uh, uh, how can we use this uh, material for resisting the uh, diagonal shear force? Diagonal shear force is uh, just, just imagine we have a, a, a window openings and uh, the cracks will happen here like this, the wall, right? So now to just to simulate this, we have to make a wall panel like this and we have to apply a force. So in order to simulate this, we are keeping the sample in diagonal direction and we are applying the force. So the crack will be like this, this crack to simulate this crack. Just to simulate this, crack, we are doing this testing. So this uh, uh, gives you an idea about how the material resists the lateral forces. Now, unreinforced wall resists the force of 20 kN, whereas the reinforced wall goes up to 100 kN, uh, five times, five-fold higher capacity, five-fold higher capacity. And it's a brittle failure. Now it comes uh, to the textile case. It comes down, as I mentioned earlier, with reference to the crack opening in the textile rupture, it keeps on going like this. So now, in the textile behavior, we can able to see a lot of cracks, lot of cracks, which shows that this, this, this particular wall sample is moving, in this, it's like expanding in this direction, but the provided textile holds all the uh, wall together and resists the applied force by creating a wonderful interaction between uh, the surface as well as the uh, textile layer. So after the uh, testing, we just open and to see what happened exactly internally, you can see here. And uh, another grid, this is the polypropylene based grid. And when we use FRP, I already mentioned the model. And uh, our, our FRP is not able to, uh, it, it will give you wonderful strength. You can see uh, the strength of FRP is tremendous, like five fold increase, but the failure is sudden. So here also, we have used the same geo grid in the form of uh, FRP with epoxy. So again, it is a brittle uh, pattern. Uh, so what happened exactly this connection region, uh, this is the connection region completely gone off and this is the corner region uh, and completely came off. So uh, with reference to the strength, if, if my strength of my uh, um, textile is very less, I can able to get only the uh, middle crack and it is fair enough to resist the diagonal force. So when I'm using textile, I can get a behavior like this. When I use the same textile in a, a bonded way like this, uh, I can able to get a failure like this. So that's very, very important. When we choose uh, for FRP, we should choose FRP accordingly. Like uh, the modulus of uh, carbon is very high. Modulus of your glass is high and modulus of BFRP is literally lesser than carbon. And uh, strength also matters. Thickness of that uh, FRP matters a lot. If you allow uh, the FRP to yield, then we can expect a crack like this. So that is more advisable because we can get a yielding pattern, a desirable yielding pattern. So what it, what does it mean means, suppose if I have a window opening, I'm expecting that crack should form like this. If I strengthen this, the crack is happening like if I strengthen this, the crack is going to happen like this, below this. So this is this is what it, it, it intends like. Okay, so now the question comes, so you are talking about only the geogrid, what will happen if I use the, the conventionally available textiles? So you can use uh, conventionally available textiles too. Uh, a typical example is number of layer matters, strength of the textile matters a lot. Okay, now you can see here, um, this is the surface preparation and we made uh, anchorages and we made a small plastering and then we used uh, textile layers with anchorage and then gone for a plastering like this and we applied a diagonal shear testing. So now, uh, you can see here, uh, this is, uh, this two is welded wire mesh. This two is welded wire mesh. Welded wire mesh reached 160 kilometer and come down like this. And uh, this, uh, this is glass textile. Let me change the color. So this is glass textile. Go, gone up to 110 kilometer. It gone up to 140 and 160 kilometer. So glass textiles, uh, uh, we got up to 110 kilonewton. That uh, the FRP contributes up to 160 kilonewton. Okay. So now, uh, sorry, not FRP. This is welded wire mesh. Welded wire mesh, right? So this is the conventional failure pattern, and this is the textile failure pattern. This is the textile. The textile ruptures exactly in the middle, and uh, let the sample 
to behave like this and a welded wire mesh uh, we experience the crack like this in this pattern and in some cases we got a crushing failure also with reference to the strength of your welded wire mesh okay um, so now uh, another in study we made a textile using a plastic uh, waste bottle we made a uh, you can see here the text the plastic bottle uh, bottle has been converted into the strip form we converted into a mesh form like this and uh, uh, the individual strip testing shows that that uh, modulus of pet bottle is higher than modulus of uh, grid material but uh, the post peak degradation is uh, sudden and it is very gradual why we have done the studies? Why can't we reuse this kind of uh, pet water model, waste, uh, waste, and can because that is available everywhere. And the mechanism of making grid is very simple. Anybody, anybody can use this. And uh, that's what we that the study was. And uh, we strengthened the wall like this and like this. And uh, after this, we studied uh, bending, parallel, and the joint, and then uh, diagonal shear behavior. So obviously, that uh, intention behavior also it shows that after reaching the point. It had a drop. So it's a brittle material. So we experienced a brittle failure. So this is the pet water based textile. And uh, but the beauty is the conventional sample failed in a brittle way. And the pet water bottle shows you that uh, green color is a pet water bottle. I will change the color. So after this, we have a sudden. Just a degradation like it. it's not like a sudden but it is final failure is in middle form so whereas the textile used you can see the first drop because of crack and then the tra force transfers to the uh, textile material it takes the force and gradually degrades that's enormous amount of area which shows enormous amount of toughness we have that can be effectively used to resist seismic forces right now. so that is the middle failure of conventional and pet water waste and your textile waste so uh, in diagonal shear, it offers wonderful amount of resistance uh, without any rupture. That is in bending, it ruptures. OK, so now I'm going to uh, uh, show you in a small case study we have done. Um, and I now try to connect uh, uh, my presentation uh, with the previous cases. Like right? uh, we have discussed about a lot of uh, seismic bands, right? seismic bands. So the purpose of seismic band is to integrate. The purpose of seismic band is to integrate uh, every level and then we have to go for uh, vertical reinforcement so that my building will be integrated and uh, that will cumulatively resist the seismic force or any kind of settlement force. So, so what we have done is a uh, first of its kind study we can probably say in India. I don't know about uh, other international studies, but there is no as of now there is no paper in this uh, building lifting. Not, this also is not yet published so far. So uh, I will show you, this is the building which we have planned to, this is that the, you can see the level is almost same. Um, and it, this is a typically a 60 years old building, masonry building and made up of uh, this is lime water based uh, building. <coughs> there is no any damp proof course, plinth beam in this building. There's no damp proof course and plinth beam in this building. So after uh, first, uh, let me show you first what we have done is we have uh, opened the foundation. First, we have opened the foundation. The foundation, the foundation is made up of uh, brick masonry, like it's a stepped foundation. Like, like this, uh, it's a stepped foundation like this. So we have checked the foundation. The foundation, uh, uh, we have a foundation experts. They have checked the foundation. They said the capacity is good and uh, there is no need for any other strengthening purpose. And we are just going to increase the height by 45 centimeter, one and a half feet. It's almost close to 0.5 meter. I think. So first we have thoroughly examined the foundation. We have gone up to the depth of the foundation at multiple locations to see the capacity of the foundation. We see a lot of uh, weeds and uh, root growth and we have completely removed and uh, just grounded with uh, some swimming water kind of thing. And then in building lifting, the second case is uh, transferring the building force uh, to the jack sequence of jacks and to disconnect the building from the foundation. That is the first step. So they have made a slot in the building like the slots and they will go for a placement of screw, screw jack. And then they will apply the screw. The screw jack is not that uh, ready-made available screw jacks. One revolution is equal to one mm. That is, that is, this is how they have made the screw jacks, especially made for this building lifting purpose. Okay. So now this is like this. 
okay there is a wooden piece to make it uh, uh, equal to the width of the wall close to width of the wall it is actually not width of the wall and uh, uh, then we will they will go for another store like this and they will go for another store like this and now they have placed and they have placed and they have removed the remaining brick parts so this is how they will go for a sequence of screw jacks now you can see the sequence of screw jacks and now the building is disconnected the building is disconnected now the height is same but the building is disconnected from the foundation now all the forces on exactly over the screw jacks sequence of series of screw jacks and uh, if you have openings that has to be uh, filled with some uh, uh, brick masonry wall or so that so the problem will not happen but in our case it is reinforced with uh, uh, steel frames so we have utilized the same frame and in some places we need uh, so we have provided the support like this we have disconnected the foundation we have disconnected the electrical supply and everything now the building is resting over the screw uh, series of screw jacks so now if you look at this it is like an uh, aroma kind of yeah, it's like a point load kind of i can see it's like point load point load point load we try to maintain the distance as much as possible where the interface walls are coming there we have to provide those jacks like this this is like an acting like a point load if you start the lifting process now the building will collapse so the next step is to distribute the force uniformly through some medium so that point load will be avoided so what the the what the next step is so they have to excavate the nearby area and they will uh, place bricks and mortar to make the stable things now uh, the building will be transferred to the jack like so they will place a suppose if it is in this direction they have to place a angle in this direction in transverse direction and they will place two jacks one and two okay and then and then they will place a complete steel sections throughout the wall so that the, now the force will be transferred uh, uh, to this uh, channel section the channel section is filled with special mortar so that the undulated surface will be evenly distributed kind of and then the screw of a uh, lot of jacks will be placed like this now the force is uniformly transferred now another one question has come that uh, how can i integrate this channel and this channel is by means of welding we have to integrate this so that the building is integrated when the lifting process starts the building will uniformly move okay now uh, the second thing is a very important thing is uh, the integration part so there are five uh, manpower has been employed inside the building with all the safety protocols and now uh, this this c this a is a series of jacks b is again a series of jacks c is again a series of jacks d is a series of jacks and e is a series of jacks once this process started first the a person will go for one revolution of the this jack one revolution one mm of every jack and the b will start then the c will start then the d will start then the e will start with reference to the capacity openings and many other things this will be decided so one revolution is equal to 1 mm one jack can go up to one cycle can go up to 12 mm 12 revolution is 12 mm so now you can see here previously uh, you can see now the force was kept in a single wooden piece only single wooden piece right now you can see we have used another wooden piece and we have lifted using the jack which means the height has been increased if you want to compare the height you can see here the lifting sequence started and we had a bench work here to measure the height also and perfectly we have used instrumentation um, like lbdt in corner mid of the wall in here and here and here and we have used strain gauges in the channel section to see whether the strain distribution is happening uniformly or not and we have used load cell in the middle of the building and here to see the load uh, uh, like distribution whether it is happening uniformly because through this we can able to monitor the load distribution we know every load every axial load how that uh, load distribution should happen everything has been uh, measured previously and we were expecting that load uh, to be absorbed through the uh, load cell if it happens if it increases we have to slow down the process if it is decreases we have to lifting the 
we have to continue the lifting process. That was an idea. So uh, you can see here, we have used strain gauges in the channel section, in this direction, as well as in the bottom direction to see what the strain distribution happens. The strain distribution, what we observed is, you can see the strain gauges in this direction and in the direction we have used to the bottom. And this is the LVDT we have used at different locations and load cells between this, so that we can able to see the load capacity of this particular region. We have estimated the capacity of this gap so that we can able to maintain this. So uh, the strain distribution as we observed is like a, a linear, which is wonderful. Thing. And uh, load as a kind of uh, we have observed and we finally maintain this. Uh, after completing the sequence, because the load will vary like this. The load cell will give you a different values. It will keep on going and finally it will reach the sustained value after completing. Because if I dist disturb this jack, if I use, uh, if I see the load cell value, it will be different. After completing all the sequence, the load cell will, uh, load cell will show you the exact reading of, for example, if I need 18 kilometer. Now, when I started the lifting process of A, it will not be 18, it will be come to 0, point, 0 point, uh, 1, 2, 3, something like this. After completing all the five sequence, it will equals this value, 18 or 17.5, 18.5. So after completing the cycle, the building will come to a uh, perfect uh, equilibrium condition. Okay, so now we have lifted the building to a height of 45 centimeters. So you can see here, one was there, second was there, now three. Okay, we completed the lifting process. Now. Transfer in the building to the actual foundation is very, very important. Now, I told you this building don't have even plinth beam, cam to force anything. So we decided to introduce plinth beam to distribute the force evenly. So what we did is, in, we removed this jacks and we placed a channel section in this direction, in this direction, and we placed a jack in both sides like this. You can see here, we created a cavity and we made a form of using the bricks only uh, because they are placing the form of will be very difficult. So we placed like this and uh, we introduced the beam and we completed the plinth beam. We completed the plinth beam construction. Now the beam, uh, the building has a plinth beam. Okay, now I told you, uh, please connect with uh, this study with that uh, lintel bands, earthquake bands, seal band. So what we have done is uh, we reinforced the wall. Basically, this kind of reinforcement will be done using steel reinforcement. Like I have seen this kind of masonry building in multiple level of uh, steel to 6 mm reinforcement they will place between the bottom. Uh, those reinforcement will start to corrode because of a uh, lot of uh, external impurities as well as the salt present and water thing. And it will start to corrode and it will, it will show you the cracks. Basically, in seashore regions, we can see this kind of cracks very uh, everywhere. And if your salt content is high in the water as well as in the uh, sand content. There also you will see cracks. So to avoid that, we used the textile, geotextile um, uh, in this as a reinforcement to the wall and that, that wall thickness, the mortar thickness is not increased. Mortar thickness is very, very uh, same as, as that of the previous case and uh, we place the reinforcement in this direction and lateral direction we have interconnected. We have interconnected. The purpose is this. The previous cases of very lifted buildings, so lot of sign of cracks because of minor settlements after the lifting process completes after a year or two. Okay, so uh, because the connection is, I will show you, I will explain you the connection. Uh, okay, so that creates a lot of cracks in the building to avoid that. We have used these kind of reinforcement. So these reinforcement will take the tension force, will never allow the cracks to happen in the building. Or even if it happens, it will control the crack growth. And then uh, this is how the slot will, uh, this is the old building is the new model, new new brick level. Now this this area is having a 25 mm thickness and uh, it will be filled with dry mortar. Dry mortar through a hammering form, through a hammering like this, they will hammer. Well, first of it has surface has been treated using a, a latex modified uh, slurry coating and then the hammering was started and uh, was filled. So in order to ensure proper shear transfer, what we have did is we have made a shear slot like this uh, connection as uh, like zigzag platter like this and geograd reinforcement is also there. So we have done the plinth production also. Okay, so now the building is lifted. 
now the building transferred all the forces to the foundation now we started to retrofit or upgrade the building we can say so we saw a lot of cracks in the building before lifting it's a very old building a lot of damages were there so what we did is we opened uh, all the regions where uh, the strengthening to be done and there we have seen a lot of cracks in the building we stitched the cracks this is this is the crack we can see here kind of cracks and here so we made a slot and we placed the textile and we used a lat uh, uh, latex modified slurry we uh, we pasted like this and we filled the cracks and then we gone for a fresh cement plastering because i want to maintain that uh, level uh, very perfectly to distribute the pores through textiles and then we have made a uh, this uh, polypropylene based uh, special polypropylene made uh, bidirectional uh, uv tech uh, first of its kind we tried in this uh, uh, study uh, it's like a column um, vertical connecting the lintel level and connecting the screw level this is the anchor this anchor we have specially because it is not like a normal screw kind of thing this will have a anchorage of uh, depth of like this special anchorage is we we uh, bought it and we have anchor and we tested its bluff study and uh, uh, we can see this is the internal side and external side and then the mortar is also normal cement is mortar but the ratio is not 1 is to 4 1 is to 5 it is 1 is to 2 1 is to 3 i don't remember exactly 1 is to 2 i hope so 1 is to 3 something like that with latex modified so that uh, the bonding and uh, further cracks should not happen so uh, bonding issues should not happen waterproofing kind of so we made it very perfectly using latex modified things after completing this this is the actual building and um, uh, the lifting process and everything we have a uh, small video in youtube also you people can catch up the video uh, in youtube actually we 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 exp we 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 are creating some kind of settlement in this building to see what is happening to the reinforcement continuously we are monitoring small amount of settlement they happen so what happened exactly there is no crack in the building there is no crack in the building this building is available in our campus room. the crack there is no crack some kind of a crack we observed here which says that the provided textile reinforcement effectively takes the tension force due to a created settlement and keeps the building very safe against the settlement issue and the provided reinforcement horizontal reinforcement in the wall of multiple layer perfectly carries the tensile force never let the foundation the settlement cracks to happen in the building so the textile reinforcement which is provided in the wall as well as the textile uh, textile reinforcement provided for strengthening purpose uh, perfectly takes care of the building from settlement issues and from the study we observed these kind of uh, reinforcements provides perfect confinement uh, in lateral force also so it will work in lateral kind of so we are facing a lot of tremors during the year in rookie we can experience two to three to four tremors possibly every year very small amount of tremors so uh, it resists all the forces obviously with settlement issues also has been encountered the typical proof uh, people may say that laboratory study laboratory study it is a it is not laboratory study it is a laboratory study outcome has been fruitfully used in lifting and strengthening an actual building uh, it's only g uh, we are planning for in future we are planning for g plus one also so uh, if anybody happens to visit uh, cbri or Ruki, please do visit this building internally also you can see previously there was no staircases now we have provided a staircases to show how much the building was lifted so by this i'm concluding my presentation i hope i have taken one hour so thank you and if you have any queries questions uh, we can have uh, clear discussions queries questions thank you thank you thank you shivas shivas uh Thank you so much for covering the various failure aspects of masonry structures, then the importance of integral box action um, in the overall performance of the masonry building. You have also given us a complete overview of different strengthening techniques from the low cost to the advanced composites, along with the case study of using FRP and geopolymer composites for masonry under in-plane and out-of-plane action. And also, a uh, very unique study on lifting the building and strengthening the same using the textile reinforcement. So we have few questions. Uh, the first uh, question is that in which specific situation 
one need to go for strengthening and retrofitting basically um, see uh, apart from seismic apart from forget about seismic seismic is going to happen rarely just to, let us right. assume like settlement is very very important uh, settlement issues is not because foundation settlement yes foundation settlement that is happening uh, because i have uh, um, witnessed more than i can say 200 300 masonry buildings uh, all across uh, northern regions northern east region, right. north northeastern as well as himachal regions because of drainage issues predominant amount of uh, settlement happens drainage issues if your drainage nearby drainages has some cracks and water seepage through that i will i will try to show some reports i will do after this discussion i will try to show one apartment was there it's a gps uh, 3 it's a masonry okay. structure so a uh, right portion left portion and middle of the building has staircase okay, okay. and the right side building is settled because of drainage issue poor drainage issues whereas the left side building is safe okay so now the, uh, it comes to us and whether i can able to see one question here like uh, what are the ndt testing that we have on this masonry okay i will i will tell you what we have to do is we have to do flat jack testing so flat jack mm -hmm. test we have conducted so that instrument also uh, made by me i have fabricated it okay according to the uh, experience uh, building experience the wall size and everything we have made about and we have calibrated it so we have done a flat jack flat jack will give you i will try to show some of the major some of the images also it's a, a single flat jack a uh, single also we have used or double, double, also, we used. We double used. also uh it is a, it's a rectangular not semi oval it's a rectangular thing so oh. what we observed is when the crack occurred obviously the stress distribution uh, becomes very weak when we apply uh, the flat jack you will understand that before reaching 1 mega pascal of stress the strain is uh, um, uh, it's, it's enormous strain is enormous oh. so it says that uh, it is very weak whereas in another mm -hmm. case the opposite side of the building this wonderful capacity uh, like 1/4 one, one of the strain is needed to reach 1 mega pascal which which means that much amount of stiff the wall is okay, that is the meaning of that so we have done those study in this building also to understand the capacity the capacity is wonderful uh, wonderful and some cracks were there so that can that cracks can be stitched afterwards that, that's what uh, we have done so same thing we have to do first of all the thing is first to, worst thing in masonry building is the lintel mm. in majority of the building lintel will have cracks okay whatever the plastering repairing whatever you do it will reoccur again within a within a span of 3 to 6 months so now the question comes settlement issues are there and mm. another uh, important thing we have to look at is the sun side as well as lintel okay because of that we will find lot of issues and water dampness and mm. uh, water dampness because of vegetation growth or vegetation growth cracks kind of first we have to understand what type of issues are if the settlement issue is because of because of tree growth nearby the building so if you open up the building you will see the crack is going towards the building and it it, it travels try to travels below the foundation mm -hmm. okay yes. in that case your building will have settlement in that case what mm -hmm. we have to do is we have to cut the root exactly which is growing below the building and we have to make a small protection wall so that what will happen that the will, wall will uh, that the root will react with the wall and it, it will change the path it will change its path without mm -hmm. disturbing the, the tree in the path cracks will be yeah. deviated so th that is one kind of uh, understanding second one is if the if the uh, settlement is due to water seepage through some drainage or uh, through uh, some of the seepage through some septic tank drainage units so that also we have to see okay and that can be easily seen uh, through the you can see the nearby drainage is cracked and settlement you can everywhere you can see the settlement another one settlement uh is because of uh, apart from this uh, tree growth and uh, drainage thing we can expect uh, settlement uh, because of clay soils clay soil during some water uh, some some during some rainy season uh, the clay will become more active and uh, you will see lot of rising dampness we used to call that as a rising dampness the dampness will keep on growing from the bottom towards the top if you plaster it or if you cover with tile don't do that mistake if you cover with the tile next day or next week it will go above the tile if you cover with again we have seen a building they have reached up to the roof level covered with tile and tile and tile it reached the roof level the slab is eroded 
okay okay so those things will happen so we have to end okay if it is a clay soil we have to do a uh, treatment for that so before strengthening a building we have to see possible reason for the settlement right. and uh, encounter all the reasons if the lintel is corroded what we used to generally prefer is just remove the lintel if it is a cut lint if it is a true lintel cut the lintel remove the lintel because we are going to adopt external confinement so yeah. forget about lintel now remove the lintel place a precast lintel now we have done in our campus and our we have retrofitted repaired our masonry buildings using through uh, existing residential building where i am residing we are doing that okay, okay. removing the lintel and sunset go for a precast with well very good cover depth with uh, waterproofing chemical as well as uh, corrosion resistance chemical place it and fill with mortar fill with concrete that's it enough so okay. um, that is the one day uh, one day removal one day placement uh, you can perfect perfectly and that will increase your lifetime of your building otherwise every six months we have to do retrofit okay. okay after settlement issues were solved go for foundation settlement foundation checking if the foundation again is settled we have to strengthen the foundation and then go for uh, external reinforcement okay. uh, after this discussion i will try to show how the flat okay. jack works and other things after the sir uh, yes since you talked about and you have already given a complete spectrum of different strengthening systems uh, which one can go for the retrofitting of masonry structures uh, how to choose a specific strengthening system is it depends on the failure pattern or it also depends on the other situations as well going for a grouting going for externally bonded going for frcm or frp how one can go for See, how one um, can choose? if your building is located in a clay soil and everywhere in the in and around region if you find every building has a rising dampness which means that is a clay soil okay and water is going not going downwards because of pore pressure it is going it is coming towards uh, upside Up, yes. okay, nowadays we have breathable material breathable material mm. uh what will take no it, when you do plastering using the those material uh, it will remove the water from outside it will it will it will allow the wall to breathe in and it will keep your wall dry in that circumstance okay. frp material is not applicable because it is a dampness uh, mm. no epoxy grouting will work so we have to use slats and we have to go for key with special grouting material non shrinkable grout material okay. and go for textile reinforcement which is non corrosive and if your demand is high if it is a g plus 1 building we have to go for multiple layers we can go for multiple layers with this kind of breathable composites so what will happen the breathable okay. concrete will drain out the water it will keep your building dry okay, okay. if your building is dry and if you think that my building is not uh, going to face any earthquake my building is not in a uh, prone region we can go for frp but frp the issues are we have to grind the surface make it smooth and go for frp and again we have to cover it with some kind of thing even if some dampness occurs that will uh, affect the thing so uh steel is also good material but the worst thing is steel is good but mortar is very very bad because of its porous nature small water ingress into the mortar steel if you keep it open it will not corrode if you immerse this uh, steel into a mortar in concrete mortar, it will start to because of lot of chemical and reactions and uh, current inputs so we have to protect our uh, steel reinforcement from the corrosion okay. we can use gi coated also again it won't last long for a long long duration when it when you, when you, when you go for a hilly region predominant amount of rain will be there and uh, you right. can't make in the quality of mortar because mm. there they can't transport the sand they have to use locally available sand that is uh, that is having a lot of impurities also so there depends on the depends on the region we have to choose the material for hilly regions transporting the sand is very 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 difficult task very tough okay mm. and they have to choose uh, locally available materials so accordingly we can choose uh, the textile or uh, frp or steel whatever it may be okay okay mm. and uh, in one of your slide uh, during the component level testing you showed a shear failure of a masonry wallet is it hmm. because of the higher reinforcement ratio or the reason yeah, yeah, is yeah. something else basically the capacity of wall is small compared to the capacity of the ratio uh the okay. reinforcement the capacity of provided reinforcement capacity of the wall should be uniform to get a uniform behavior if the capacity of your reinforcement is less then we can get a yielding the capacity of reinforcement mm -hmm. is high we can get a shear failure okay yeah uh you said that the geopolymers are considered as one of the best uh, uh reinforcement uh, 
because their breaking strain is very high. You yeah, said strain is more than fifteen percent. More than fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. One five years. One five. Okay. One five. Okay. That is huge. And uh, in case of a PET, uh, the plastic bottles examples which you have given and also done some kind of a visual testing. I just I'm keen to know what is the bonding of mortar with this plastic reinforcement. Uh, basically, that is better than my geogrid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because okay. you know that at, uh, the aperture, you know, the aperture plays vital role in bonding. And mm. as it is a thin layer, and uh, the aperture we have provided as I think it's a two, 20, 25 mm uh, aperture, 30 mm aperture we have provided. So the mortar travels very well. So that's why we have so aperture. Small... You mean to say uh, the, the grid, 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 the grid, grid, grid opening. Okay. Okay. And uh, in mortar also, we should not use cement mortar directly. We can add some kind of latex. Um, latex. Latex. Okay. So that Edited. creates even better bonding. Better bonding with these oh. kind of textiles. And it's like okay. latex is nothing but rubber, you know. That's a water uh, repellent kind of thing. Once after completing, it acts like a water resistant and uh, waterproofing chemical kind of thing. And so, uh, what is the tensile strength of this PET fibers we are expecting in uh, terms of stress? PET. PT, tensile PT. strength. What is the uh, tensile strength? You can see in this time. Let me show. Let me check it. We have tested uh, one strip. Uh, we have tested one strip, and we observed is uh, one twenty megapascal. One twenty MP. And for the this geopolymer, the geopolymer. Yeah, actually, basically, the geo strength, you know, geo uh, synthetic material strength are uh, in terms of uh, kilonewton per meter rather than megapascal. 100, 200, okay. 300, 400 kilonewton per meter will be kilonewton the strength I have used. Okay. It is available okay. up to 1000 kilonewton per meter, but that is very huge. Before reaching the deal, our building will collapse. Okay. You know, because I, I, I have just seen your one of the load displacement curve for a geopolymer where you have mentioned 40 kilonewtons. Right? Mm, yeah. The load, the yeah. load. Because 40 kilonewton is humongous. Compared yeah. to a wire mesh or a fiber mesh, they maximum take a load of 10 kilonewton, not more than that. Yeah. Right. So uh, since it is a rigid kind of material where you can measure its width, you can measure its thickness, we can yeah. convert that into a stress. But why there is a specific reason why you want to express in terms of kilonewton per meter? Because you know, for the not an individual, individual strip. It is like a collective of multiple strips. So geosynthetic testing okay, protocol says that Multiple number of strip has to be together. It has to be distinct. Ah, okay, okay. Those so you mean uh, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever is the breaking load that divided by the aperture spacing, yes, right? That will give you the force per unit length. Okay, and uh, sir, according to your viewpoint, where do you rate the geogrid mesh compared to conventional wire mesh and fiber mesh reinforcement? Since compared you have to, done compared to wire mesh and the fiber mesh reinforcement. See, uh, um, basically this, uh, if you are affordable for steel mesh, if you think it is transportable to me, you can go for steel mesh. For hilly regions okay. where we can't uh, transport those material and we can't afford because it's quite uh, cheaper than the steel mesh. And uh, we can't transport those. It's very light in weight. You can easily take it amount of any, any kind of amount. And the life uh, time of lifespan of this uh, geo, uh, geosynthetic material is hundred years. It is provided by the manufacturers. Hundred years. 100 okay. years. So we have no issues with this. And uh, uh, we have a lot of coatings: bitumen coating, rubberized coating, and uh, PVA resin based coatings are also available. So bituminous coast coating will quite a bit. Uh, after we have we used to keep samples for long term study also. So five years before we have casted a sample. Now we have tested a sample after five years. So we absorbed some kind of delamination, some degradation in the coating of bituminous. Okay. But in rubberized coating, it is wonderful. So there is no issues with rubberized coating. So based on the coating, we have to choose the material. If it is only just uh, ground story, uh, go, uh, then we can go for this uh, synthetic material easily. If it is a G plus two, then you can go for combined thing. Either you can go for uh, steel mesh or steel mesh with this kind of meshes. Steel meshes for corners. Okay. And for these meshes for uh, horizontal thing, and uh, try to use the uh, we can't use steel mesh to reinforce the wall, but we can use mm. this textile to reinforce the wall that will act as a multiple level bands to integrate the building. 
and in one of the slides for lifting building you have uh, showed that there is a geo grid mesh which you have put on the as a mortar joint right there was a yeah, wall, 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 there. Yeah. That's and what, on the top of the course you have put it one reinforcement i call it as a bed joint reinforcement and then especially for the spandrels and uh, uh, spandrels and the bandages you have used a different kind of a mesh mm. is it a geo grid mesh or so something yes. different because that it is it is, is actually where, where actually uh, uh, to reinforce the wall uh, in a horizontal bed way uh -huh. i used flexible geo grid that is made up of polyester okay. uh for polyester. Uh, reinforce strengthening the wall i got wall. used rigid that is polypropylene based geo uh, grid okay so any specific reason or can be used yeah, yeah, yeah. both Re uh, the reason is for... though, that will provide you a better lateral uh, resistance compared to this synthetic synthetic is very flexible material that is quite a rigid material that's why okay okay thank you sir i think uh, i believe all any, the questions, questions of participants participants uh, there is one question uh, which says that what are the ndt testing that were on the masonry building done before yeah, taking NDT, up the yeah ndt generally we can go for conservation uh, rebound hammer only for slab okay what are the building i have retrofitted strength and you know that hmm. is not even having rcc slab that is called rb slab reinforced brick slab that is not even having okay. rcc slab okay, okay. RCC. so we have taken care of that also to, so that i should not collapse that slab and uh, there was a hole in the middle that was a old pump house then we have filled with a special slab uh, okay okay then i will try to explore my project thing Uh, sir, there was one question which we were discussing since this all these sessions with the different speakers mm -hmm. that especially in case of a fiber mesh, there is an inherent difficulty in me measuring the cross sectional area of the reinforcement because of flexibility in nature, right? Yes. Yes. So, what do you suggest? How to measure the area or the cross sectional area of these fibers? Uh... For for me, I have no issues because my grid will give me give you all shape and sizes. <laughs> yeah, because it is perfectly uh, yes, yes, perfect in shape, and you can also measure through vernier calipers. But especially, yes. let us take an example of a carbon fiber mesh carbon. or a glass you, fiber. See, mesh. Uh, basically, what we have to do is like if you are using with epoxy, with epoxy, epoxy you can uh, you can measure the wet thickness rather than the dry thickness. Dry thickness is not possible. They will give you the filament number. 10000 10k 15k 30k filament numbers based on that we can estimate so Otherwise, you mean to say that it each strand how many number of filaments is there yes, yes. and what is the cross sectional area of a one single yarn or a filament okay. they will give you otherwise because if you are going to use with epoxy there is no need to measure its uh, individual we can go for after epoxy what will be the thickness can be measured yes uh, uh, okay. even the dr weber single also expressed that since it is slightly rigid after the application of the epoxy yeah. although if you see in a cross section it is not circular it is all uh, although it is rectangular in shape you mm. can calculate an equivalent width or its equivalent thickness in mm. order to calculate the stress yes yes okay so uh, i will show you that uh, i will show you the yes, uh, please that jacket sure. yes So can you see this uh, flag jack? Yes, we can see, sir. Yes. So what mm. we have used is this is the uh, flag jack uh, here, exactly in the middle, and we right. just place some top and uh, bottom plates, and we use this L V D to measure this. This is a single flag uh, system. We will apply mm. and it will pop up, and we will measure the stress for this area and the strain for this. Okay. This is uh, one, and. Um, I will share another one. Okay. And this lecture is over. Okay. So this is the building I was talking about. Um, so 
you can see here in this wall there is a crack mm. can you see the crack right yes yeah. we can see so this crack. this uh, this is the apartment i am talking about this apartment right side was having this much amount of crack whereas the left side of the apartment having no crack no sign of no the, crack right. uh, basically the um, this is because of the nearby uh, at least we can say from the wall within a one and a half meter there is a drainage the drainage mm. has seepage issues and this is the reason for that now you can see here uh, this is a flat jack output stress versus strain uh, for this uh, damaged building we reached 0.6 megapascal the strain is 0.003 right damaged damaged hmm. for non damaged hmm. region you can see we reached 1 megapascal within 0.00175 so for right. 0.6 the strain is only 0.001 so right. one third one third, one third. Reduces because of the diagonal cracks. Okay. So if okay. the crack occurs, we are losing the stiffness like anything, and uh, the capacity mm. also slashes to one third capacity. So this right. entity is very essential to understand. Uh, you can see the drainage. Uh, drainage is damaged through this. Okay. The water seepage were. Uh, so that crack which happened, uh, it is because of that uh, drainage. Drainage uh, water 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 seepage issue. Water. Okay. You okay. can see this is the central middle central uh, staircases, oh. and the left side is safe, the right side is damaged severely. Okay. So during this uh, in situ flat jack test, uh, you have performed two different tests: one on the uh, affected region and one on the non-affected region. Yes, 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 yes. In order to get the stress strain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is again another testing. This the result will be like this only. Uh, there is no need to go beyond one megapascal. One megapascal because obviously it will be very. It's a manual operated, right? It's not a machine mm. operated, and mm. more than a megapascal, it will affect your building also. So within the stress strain, yes, we can yes. understand. Yeah. So in this case, you can see one megapascal reached a capacity of 0.002, whereas the mm. previous case you can see the comparison, so that you can understand. Uh, one megapascal reached a capacity of 0.00175. So this okay. is better than. All other uh, the data which we have collected, and uh, usually, uh, if when we talk about this gravity loading hmm. or due to gravity or the light load, how much is the maximum stress we are expecting on the wall? Suppose it's a G plus one building. We can't is it point three MPa? That, uh, we, that we have estimated. That we have estimated, and uh, for that we have to uh, take some bricks and we have to estimate the uh, okay. based on that we can estimate. But in flat jack, uh, there is no need to go go beyond one megapascal. One megapascal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It will it okay. will affect the building. Hmm. Okay. So I believe that questions of all the participants have been appropriate uh, answered. And if there are any further queries, I request all the participants they can reach out to Dr. Chidambaram through email. And uh, Finally, as a mark of respect to Dr. Chidambaram for the time and valuable input he has shared with us all today, we would like to offer a memento as an effort of appreciation. I would like to uh, call Ms. Lakshmi to please uh, offer a memento to Dr. Shiva Chidambaram. Thank you. Sir, on behalf of everyone, we would like to thank you, and your presence has been very valuable to us today. And we certainly look forward to another interaction in the near future. Sure, so sure, sure. Thank you so much for thank your time, you, Thank sir. you, uh, uh, Professor Pravin, for the opportunity uh, given to me uh, for interacting with a wonderful amount of people. And I thank all the participants for your patience in listening to me. If you have any uh, doubts or any queries, any help in this regard, please feel free to contact me. My details are available. Google me. You will find everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I kindly request you to please stay with us for a few more minutes. Uh, we will be having a vote of thanks. Okay, okay, sure, sure. And then uh, and, and wishing all, 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 all participants <laughs> a happy Diwali. Yes, thank you. And wishing, uh, uh, wishing you all a very, very happy and prosperous Diwali. And now I request uh, uh, Ms. Shambhavi, Joint Secretary of uh, IAS Trakti Triple IT Hyderabad Student Chapter, to propose a vote of thanks. Shambhavi, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shambhavi Trivedi, pursuing MTech in Computer Aided Structure Engineering at IIIT Hyderabad. It is my honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks. On behalf of IA Structure Student Chapter, IIIT Hyderabad, my heartfelt gratitude to all the guest invitees, 
and keynote speakers who have spent their busiest time gracing this occasion and sharing their valuable insights on seismic safety of masonry structures. We are very thankful for the knowledge gained during the session by the eminent speakers on different topics covering seismic behavior of masonry building, numerical modeling, strengthening of masonry structures using different techniques, and testing pro protocols for masonry, and composite behaviors at material composition and structure level. I believe that these topics are of great interest to all the participants. I want to extend a very heartly thanks to all the participants, including our faculty members, uh, res uh, research scholars, UG students, people from industry, and participants from other you know, uh, participants from uh, high innovative corporations. I would also like to express our heartful gratitude to our faculty advisor, Dr. P. Praveen Kumar Venkat Rao, for his valuable guidance and, uh, and timely suggestions. My sincere thanks to Mr. Srikant, our IT team associate, Mrs. Babita, Ms. Sanori, uh, Sanori Dutt, and Mrs. Grace, our design team, for providing all the logistic support, help, and assistance. I also thank all those who have directly or indirectly helped us to make this event a grand success. I also want to acknowledge the effort, support, and cooperation my entire team have shown during the entire webinar in making this webinar a successful event. I want to end this program by ex extending my sincere gratitude to all of you for being there with us and making this event a, success, a successful event. It was indeed a great pleasure. This concludes our webinar. Thank you for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed the webinar. Happy Diwali to all of you. Uh, a, a simple note to the participants, certificates are to be given to the participants who have uh, attended the entire session. And the recorded lectures for the entire uh, webinar would be uploaded on our YouTube channel, which is Triple IT Hyderabad's YouTube channel. You can go on the YouTube channel and go through these web webinars as and when you require them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at last, I also want to extend my sincere thanks to the event sponsor, that is Science SERB, Science and Genetic and Research Board, DST Government of India. This event has been conducted under scientific social responsibility policy as a part of one of my DST projects. So thank you all. Thank you once again. Wishing you all a very happy and safe Diwali. Thank you, sir.